Hi, welcome to this lesson on the role of the various memory devices used in the computer system. So in this lesson, you will be understanding the importance of the various computer, I mean the memory devices which are used in the basic system, right? So first of all, in a basic system, we will find the hard drive, the RAM, the cache memory and the register. So these devices are based on the capacity, I mean based on the storage, these are being uh, ordered. Right? Suppose if we take uh, the access time as a priority, then the order will be in the reverse. Okay? The first place goes to the register followed by the RAM, then sorry, the register, the cache, the RAM and then the hard drive. Right. So, so we can categorize in two ways with respect to the storage and with respect to the access time. Now, why we are talking about all these things? The, for this, to understand better, let's take one example. That is, the task expected from a software or an app is to execute an audio file. The audio file, let us take the size of this file, that is 10 MB. I can write this as 10 into 1024 into I mean 10 into 1024 kilobytes into 1024 bytes into 8 bits. So this gives rise to 83,886,000 and 80 bits. Okay. Similarly, we can take the duration of this audio file, that is 5 minutes. The duration of this audio file is 5 minutes. I can write this as 300 seconds, which means now the task, that is the computation of the CPU is to execute this audio file within a 5 minutes. That means this many number of bits has to be executed within a 300 seconds, which means the computation is almost Two seven nine six two six two zero bits per second. The CPU has to execute two seven nine six two zero bits per second. So just you can imagine, there are so many bits to execute, but there is a limitation in the CPU because the CPU which are available in the market will come in the fixed sizes, that is in eight bit or sixteen bit, thirty two bit or 64 bit. The most advanced computers will make use of a 64 bit uh, CPUs. Right. Let us take a 64 bit in our example. Right. Now in order to execute 279620 bits per second, whereas in a single run the CPU can exit only 64 bits, then the CPU has to run almost almost 4370 times. Okay, the CPU has to run for 4,370 times in one second. Then only you can able to finish the task. Right. So at this rate, you can able to finish the the entire audio in five minutes. Okay. In order to achieve this, one must understand the feeding of data into the CPU. It is not as simple as we think. Right. So to understand this better. Let's take one example that is uh, in industries we, uh, we will uh, you can see in the production uh, let's take this hopper uh, as an example okay so in this hopper as you can see the area at the top is more when it goes down the the volume is getting reduced right now the material in this hopper is i mean it is bit getting narrowed down and then at the bottom you can get the exact amount of uh, material and this amount of material, I mean, the, for volumetric packaging, you can make use of it. And this exact amount of volume, I mean, the, the material will be used for the packing. Okay. So now the packing system has to pack this material uh, and then it has to go on and the process has to go on. Right. So for example, if this machine has to produce 100 packets per second, then you can imagine then how fast, I mean, the, the machine has to go on. The same way now, if you take in, uh, in this, the first, the data that is in a hard disk, the information, the audio file will be in the hard disk. So a hard disk, the size is almost about in TBs, in TBs, right. 
So the data rate, the data transfer rate is also in terms of uh, 80 to 150 Mbps. Okay. Now from this, the data will goes to the RAM. And the RAM, the size will be in GBs. The next section is the catch memory. The catch memory is closely associated with the CPU and the catch almost it runs at a frequency of the CPU right and here the size in terms of MB. Next section is the resistors and the size here is almost in bytes. followed by the CPU. So now one can understand the CPU needs 64 bytes sorry 64 bits of information for the processing for a single run. Now this process has to repeat okay so CPU has to run it very fast and what makes it to run very fast that is the clock we provide a clock signal to the CPU. The clock signal is nothing but it is a pulse signal from an oscillator. So based on the clock the CPU can perform its operation. So now exactly it needs 64 bits because the CPU is of 64 bit CPU. And who is providing the 64 bits? The resistor because the size of the resistor is almost in bytes. And the resistor size is almost equivalent to the CPU size. Suppose if you are using 64 bit the resistor size is also 64. Okay, so now both are in the same uh, range. So the resistors can deliver the exact amount of data to the CPU, and these resistors are very closely associated with the CPU. Next, the resistor it collects the data from the catch, and the catch memory it is in the CPU section, and the catch resistor CPU almost they run at the same clock frequencies. Okay, so you can get the amount from the resistor. I mean. The resistor requires the, I mean, whatever the data required, it, it gets from the catch. And the catch gets the information from the RAM. Okay. So, RAM, catch, resistor, all these three devices are the solid state devices. Whereas, the RAM gets the information from the hard disk drive. Okay. So, in the hard disk, you can have a lot of information. Right. So, this information, I mean, you can, you can send it to the RAM followed by the catch, then resistor, then finally CPU. So now you can see here we have large amount of data and this amount of data is getting reduced and then finally here, I mean, here you get only in terms of bytes, but when the data is getting reduced, at the same way, the, the speed of the data is also increased. So here the data speed is less when compared to the resistors. So here the, ex the information is less, but the access is very fast. Okay. Now, let's take one another example. When you open an application in the PC for the first time, it takes some time. And close that application, open it again. Now, the response time of this application is very less when compared to the previous because for the first time, the application has to load the files from the hard disk to the RAM, RAM to the cache, followed by the register, then CPU. Now, your data is available in this RAM, cache and registers. When you close that application, no problem. Once again, if you open, already it is existing in the RAM, so the access time is less. Okay, so you can uh, see this, right? Now, this is how, I mean, uh, the, the, the data, I mean, the feeding is how important, as you can see from this example, right? So this is the role of the register, cache, RAM, and hard disk. I hope you understood the concept of these memory devices and why we are using all these four in a basic computer system and it is necessary to have a proper feeding to the CPU. Okay. Thank you.